coach who spoke to us just before the match. Welcome, Chris. Uh, first, um, can you just, uh, Colombia first up, um, any um, things you're expecting from Colombia? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, Colombia is a strong team and we are fighting for the second play in our uh, group. So I think uh, Colombia is the strongest opponent for uh, playing on the second place in our group. And I think they are strong, they uh, play very hard and uh, they have a lot of power. So it will be a close game, I think, till the end. But uh, I I'm sure that we will win on the end. Yeah. Excellent. And um, yourselves, Germany, this is a um, big tournament for you. Uh, uh, expectations from the tournament? Yeah, uh, for the tournament, uh, for us, is the first decision uh, to make the place for the Paralympics, yeah, the third place. And uh, it's a long way for us to come down here and it uh, uh, will be a yeah, hard way for us, but uh, I think it can be possible on this tournament. Uh, after, I think, uh, 2008, of, uh, 16 years to come back to the Paralympics. So uh, it will be hard, but possible. Well, good luck. Yeah. And um, any players we can look out for that, uh, for your team that we, c we should look for? Yeah, uh, please. Uh, I oh. uh, which players should we look out for for, your, for the German team? Uh, for the third place, yeah. The, I think uh, Australia, Canada are uh, for sure number one uh, uh, set. And... Uh, yeah, I think New Zealand or uh, Germany will get the third place, so will be interesting. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, from Christoph Werner, who's been coach for a good number of years now. Germany, number nine in the world. Colombia, number ten. Colombia in the red, Germany in grey. As we look at Britta Kripke, one of a couple of female players that Germany have. They also have Masha Mosel, a mid-pointer that they could bring on a little bit later on. Now, for those of you watching for the first time, we'll be talking about high, mid and low pointers. So, Dave, I'll let you uh, talk us through that a little bit. Right, so the, the players individually get classed based on their abilities, somewhere between three and a half points and half a point and the total team on the floor at any one time can't be any greater than eight. So we kind of group people in high pointers, three, three, five, low pointers are 0 0.5, one, and mids are in the middle. That's right, and so it's almost like a game of fantasy, fantasy football, or uh, the uh, tipping competitions that you have at your workplace where you've got a certain amount of points that you can use at any one time. Eight is the maximum. You're allowed an extra 0.5 for every female player that you have on court. So Germany, theoretically, could have nine if they were to play Britta Kripke, whom we can see here, and Masha Mosel at the same time. We're about a minute away from getting underway. We're in Pool A here. Colombia versus Germany. Australia and Switzerland are the other two teams in Pool A. And then Pool B in alphabetical order. Brazil, Canada, Netherlands, and New Zealand. A reminder, the top three teams will make it through to Paris 2024. I don't know if these teams have met since they played at the World Championships two years ago. Two so years ago, yes, World Championships in Denmark about 18 months ago in Vele, and these two faced off for ninth and tenth spot with Colombia taking that one, 54-49. That's the highest they've ever ever uh, finished, ninth in the world. They currently find themselves tenth in the world in the rankings. Getting ready for the first tip-off. All right, here we go. And it's Germany with the first possession. You can see the number one, Marco Herbst. He's going to be the focus of a lot of Germany's action, the 3.5-pointer, their main outlet, and he gets them on the board straight away. Now, Roscoe will be the focus on the other side, but Vargas... Vargas has come into his own. He, you know, I, it's been fun to watch him grow as a player. 
pushing the defender out there across the line. You can't cross that line without the ball or it's a penalty. They call that a penalty try, meaning he got the point. There'll be various gestures from the referees and the various co-commentators that I have will be explaining those as the tournament unfolds. Trying to figure out why Orozco didn't go in there and attack that ball. Oh, and a, that's a missed opportunity. Orozco having some words there with uh, Paola Martinez about the pass. I think he, you know, only having one hand, he needs it to come to that hand in order to catch it. Well, that could have been a turnover, but it ended up bouncing off a German chair, so it's the Colombians who get it back. Lucky there, no turnover. Turnovers are huge, much along the lines of basketball. If you're giving away possession, then you're giving away the opportunity to score a point. But Colombia managing to match Germany at the moment. Charlie Neme with that try. Josko Wilke. Great mid-pointer for Germany. Only been playing for the past couple of years at international level, but he's very much the future of wheelchair rugby in Germany. Martinez called for the ball there so she could get back to the, the try line to inbound. Wow, I can't believe she got that over the top, but Orozco couldn't pull it down. And there we have the first turnover, and it's almost like a break of service in tennis. So Germany now with the two-point lead. There's a lot of pressure on Martinez to get the inbounds, and there, well, it's, it's like the old adage about buses. You wait ages for one to come, and then two come at once. You get a little bit nervous once you've committed a turnover, and maybe you try a little bit too hard, and all of a sudden, that is three points in a row for Germany. Yeah, a little uh, miscommunication non-verbally with Vargas. I think the pass was sent as if he was going to come back to it, and he went deep expecting it to go long. Now Roscoe in trouble. Good use of the timeout there. there. Columbia is ice cold at this point, so they need to collect and get back out there so they can beat this defense of Germany. Good use of the timeout as well also because Colombia needed to get the ball over the halfway line and they were boxed in. It's been absolutely swarming defense from Germany and yeah, they haven't been... let that number four there, John Orozco, have even an inch of space to, to get out because he's always going to be their outlet. Yeah, he's definitely their number one. If they can keep the ball out of his hands, that's their best chance of creating those turnovers. Or should I say hand? So now attacking the key. Germany set back in the key, that white area that you see. Only three players are allowed to be inside that key from a defense perspective. If a fourth goes in, that'll be a penalty. Nice play. Nice little handoff there by Orozco to Vargas. So that gets them on the board. It staunches the flow. Orozco pulled the defense to one side, allowing Vargas to get to that other corner. You'll see a lot of that. Great chest pass there out to Josko Vilke. Taking his time crossing the line to make sure that his teammates are already set up on defense because Attack becomes defense. As soon as you've scored, you have to get straight back and start defending again. Again, it's tough for Martinez with the inbound. They've really been struggling with that, Colombia. So a change of inbounder now. 
And then a huge pass over the top that is just about wow. corralled. You have to be in possession of it before you go over the line. And Vargas got there just in time. Great wheels there by him. Vilke weaving his way over the halfway line, then over the top to Herbst. Vilke's doing a great job of uh, running that offense. Getting the ball out, following his picks. Yeah, that was a good switch for Columbia. Yes, Columbia have changed inbounders. They've got Nimi now who's been inbounding and so seems you can to be see doing the a better job of it. When you can get a Roscoe the ball, uh, he can really move around with it, even if he's got a couple of guys on him. End-to-end <coughs> -end stuff, scoring very quickly. As you can see, the scoreboard says 9-5, then you've got 4-2, two, 3-2. Two. Those are the timeouts that are still available. Four of the 30-second variety for Germany and three of the 30-seconders for Colombia. Quite often used when you're in a bit of trouble and can't get the ball over the halfway line quickly enough. And then the two are the longer ones, the coaches' timeouts that last for a minute. You can't use those to stop the clock. The clock has to already be stopped. like after a score. German offense not turning it over yet. Although you can see that Columbia's offense has gotten better with the new inbound. Uh, it's a really good inbound for a 1.0 off the baseline there. From Neme. Whew. Good defense there, but they were able to get it passed. So 12 seconds for Germany now to get the ball over the halfway line into the front court. And they do just about, but how about that? Absolutely wonderful pass there. Fired out by Stefan Wecke. Oh, Roscoe had a little trouble pulling that down. Amazing that he, oh, he's. Uh. <laughs> Tipped over there, and it's going to be a loss of possession. Uh. So talk us through legal hits and illegal hits. Well, you know, Vargas came back there to set a pick instead of staying out there for the pass, which I think was crazy. But um, you're allowed to hit people as hard as you'd like to, but you can't hit them from behind the axle in a way that puts them in danger, spins their chair or flips them backward. Uh, we had a guy in practice just a couple weeks ago, I hit him from behind and his head hit the front of my chair. Uh, so that's, it's a safety concern. So he did get turned there, but I don't think they're gonna call that a spin. It almost looked like Kripke <laughs> reached out and kind of helped him fall over. Be that as it may, it's a turnover. So Germany with possession, the and they give it straight back. Oh, but. And then two turnovers, three turnovers in a row. And this one looks like it's a hell ball. Orozco had to get rid of that because he was at the half court line. He didn't want to be hit over and back. Uh, but he did it, I guess, a little too quickly. Germany comes out on top of that one. Yes, much along the lines of basketball, if you've taken the ball into the front court, you can't then go back into your own back court. Otherwise, that's an over and back, as we call it, much like a front court violation. Vilke, bit of a show and go there. So the first thing is getting it over the halfway line within 12 seconds. Then you have 40 seconds in which to score. Great defense from the Colombians, but Herbst manages to 
Great corner Dennis by Kripke to, to open that up so he could slip around. M.A. over the top. Much easier score there from Columbia. They'll take that mismatch if uh, if Kripke is on Vargas. It, he's he's certainly faster than she is. But she's got a mean picker. She can get in there and uh, really do some damage. Looks like Vilka has a, a glove issue. They're taping that rubber back on his glove. Orozco has a glove issue. He doesn't wear any. Well, it seems silly to buy two gloves when you only can wear one. And I believe that was illegal contact. He was reaching in, trying to get to the ball. You cannot touch the other player. So Roscoe will go into the penalty box for a minute. He will sit there until Germany scores or until that minute expires. Similar to hockey. And you'd expect Germany to... Germany to score well before the minutes. There you can see Roscoe at the bottom of your screen in the sin bin. Well, at, you know, when you're three minutes out, at this level of rugby, you're already thinking about how you get that last try. What, where do you need to score so that you can ensure that you get the last one? Yes, 40 seconds available for each possession, and you want to make sure that when you score... As you want to score as late as possible and leave your opponents as little time as possible for their final possession. Germany also has a possession arrow currently, which means they would get the ball at the next try. Oh, I take that back. It's pointing in Colombia's direction. Yes, Germany won the tip-off, and I don't think we've had a held ball since then. It's pointing at Germany's bench. It's a big arrow. Neme getting a little bit of a rolling start to try and get a longer pass. Oh, Rodriguez is down. He came in for Paulo Santos, or Paulo Martinez, because of the trouble they were having with the inbounds. But he just rolled up on top of the wheel of... Uh, I think that was Vilke. No, it was not. It was Vecchi. Rolling substitutions allowed on and off. These teams haven't got the biggest of benches, though, in particular Colombia. They've just got the three on the bench there that you can see. Roscoe hemmed in, needs to get the ball over the halfway line and does so. And does so quite brilliantly out to Vargas. The defense of Germany is still making it, making it hard. Likewise, Colombia here. Vilka, the one who's hemmed in, and that one is going to bounce off Herbst. Oh, and Germany comes up with it. They're Orozco saying, that, saying, how on earth are you calling that one against me? Yeah, Surely me came off Herbs first. Yep. Or last, rather. It seemed to, it must have been a, a double bounce, a bobble in between Herbs, and I think and Main must have come off Orozco finally. Great release pass there. Well, the thing about Herbst. sport, the reality is what the referees see. It doesn't matter what actually happened. Almost into the last two minutes, where teams are going to be looking to get the last possession. But the thing is, you have to make the most of your own possessions. And that's another giveaway. And that's a turnover. And it's now a five-point lead for Germany. As dominant as Orozco is individually, the... Only being able to catch that pass with one hand. Germany's really taken advantage of that. And their defense has been the story of this first quarter. Another timeout called there by Colombia. And that's because they weren't going to have enough time to inbound the ball. 
It also gives them time to reset and talk to their coach, Jonathan Vargas. And he'll be able to give them a few hints as to what to do to, well, to remind them what to do, what the plays are for the last two minutes of this first quarter. Orozco called her an equipment timeout. He's getting a new wheel. Timeout's incredibly quick. the inbound quickly enough but now they've only got 12 seconds to get it over the halfway line and it's Vargas's pass got tipped off the wheel delight on the German bench you can see Christoph Werner jumping up and down that's a huge turnover for them so around 145 is when you like to get one of those scores when you're looking at the game clock so the main thing for Germany is though that they have a seven point lead that's a huge lead already yeah especially at this level of rugby ninth versus tenth in the world and you're already seven points clear in the first quarter that's huge and with Australia in this pool you have to win this game in order to to get the other slot at the top bracket Yes, for the it's, crossovers. It's really important. Semi-finals, uh, the top two making it through to the semi-finals. So, to a certain extent, this is a quarter-final already. A minute and 15 to go. Now Kripke isn't going to be able to get that one. So there is a turnover. This could be big for Colombia. They've got it back to six points, looking to get it back to five points here. If they can keep it at five then that's limiting the damage. So into the last minute, and that's where teams are going to be looking to either score incredibly quickly or take a good 40 seconds off the shot clock. Here's where you get in some clock management. They can use their timeouts to, to if you get underneath 15 seconds, you can use a timeout and then roll that shot clock back to 15 seconds. Yes, the game clock isn't affected by it, but the shot clock is. But in this case, they're not going to be able to run it down enough, so Colombia will get the ball back. And again, Colombia has the possession arrow, so they'll get the first attempt of the second quarter, so they could chip away at this if they can maintain here. Really, their best chance is to keep Germany from scoring and score that last try, and it's, that's a two-try differential. Plus the, hopefully in the first, would be their, at least their intent. The shot clock's on 24. So Germany will, they're going to score quickly. Points on the board, of course, far more important than anything else. A six point differential. Now can they prevent Colombia from scoring here? So they'll look to use as much of this as possible. So oh, Columbia can run down the clock, but obviously the main thing they want to do is score a point. And they need to make sure the offensive players can't be in that key for more than 10 seconds without getting a penalty. Neme able to get out. I thought he was going to be stuck there. Nine seconds seems like a lot of time for Germany to score. They're blocking Orozco in as well, trying to push him over the line. He's desperate not to go over the line there. And there we go. He's got the ball and gets the point. So he was taking his time. And here's the inbound. It's going to be a Hail Mary. Orozco, he knocks over the post. You ought to be given a point for that one, but you're not. And it means that it is just a five-point deficit, but it's still five points. Germany leading 18-13 as we go into the first three-minute break.
So we saw Orozco there with the ball, trying to take his time, trying to make sure that enough time elapsed so that Germany wouldn't have time to score themselves. The German defence trying to push him over the line, give him the score so that they would have more time to play with. But it was good time management from Colombia in the end. Yeah, they did. The, they finished that quarter much better than they started it, for sure. Uh, Germany's really held on defensively. You can see that Colombia is struggling not just to get the ball in on the court, but to get it across half in that 12 seconds. And without that, you know, if you're putting in so much effort there, then it, it takes your focus off some of the other things that you need to do. If it's, you should be able to get the ball on the floor. You should be able to get across half court. But if the defense is that strong, you're going to struggle all day. The adjustment that they made, I think, was a good one. I think uh, bringing in Rodriguez for Martinez and just seemed like the inbound was working better out of Neme's hands. So we'll see what they do in the second, see if Martinez comes back out, if she uh, can get that inbound pass working. Germany seems like they, they just need to keep doing what they're doing. Five points to the good already. That is a huge deficit to try to overcome. They've got three quarters in which to do it, Colombia. Well, it was seven at one point, right? And... They do get the first opportunity, so they could put it within four. So not as bad as it could be, but still, it's a, it's a big hill to climb. And I think you can see that just the way the momentum changed after a, those first two turnovers, they happened so quickly that it almost took the wind out of Columbia sails right off the top. You're conceding points, you're using timeouts early on. It's, they're there to be used, those timeouts, but you don't want to burn too many of them too soon. You obviously can't take them with you and carry them over to the next group matches. I'm sure everyone would quite like to do that against Australia, for example, if you could have uh, five, six, seven timeouts against them. By the same token, I'm sure Australia would quite like to uh, go through a few of their group games uh, keep some timeouts in their pockets and say, right, well, we'll keep those for when we're in the semis and maybe the final. It's nice to have those timeouts at the end if you need them for clock management. But uh, any time you use a turnover that saves, or uh, I'm sorry, a timeout to avoid a turnover, it's well spent. It's well spent if you make sure you avoid the turnover and you, you end up scoring the point. You, you have to make sure that that timeout is is used for something and gets you the point. So we've had a three-minute break back for the second period. And it is indeed Colombia who have the possession arrow. And they're the ones with the first possession. Looking to get that deficit back down to four. Germany clogging up the key. And... Oh, they're, they're going to get a second bite Columbia of the cherry, ball. the Colombians. They lost possession... So that's, that's an interesting call in that the ball was tipped off a German player's hand, but the Colombian player crossed the active try line. And I think he crossed the try line before the ball hit the ground. If the ball hasn't hit the ground or a player off the court, then technically that should have been a turnover if that's the way it went. Just a reminder to the refereeing community around the world that it's Dave Mengen who's making all the calls at the moment <laughs> well, again, against I, the referees. I didn't whereas... see it. And in, in reality, is whatever the referees see. Well, what I've seen here is a turnover, and all of a sudden, well, it was early on. It was a seven-point game. They got it back to five points, did Columbia, at the end of the first period, and they have got a point and a turnover, so two points in a row. Germany absolutely boxed in here, but once again, that release valve. Wilke to Herbst. And that's going to be a sigh of relief for the Germans, finally getting a point on the board. Yeah, I don't know what uh, Colombia's coach said to them, but it certainly changed their defense coming out in the second. Clean pair of wheels there shown by Vargas.
They do a nice job, Germany does, of, of getting somebody free and clear so they can get that ball out across half. Moritz Bruckner has come on for Germany. He's the one there, number 25, with a beard. 1.5 pointer. Colombia playing defense back across the line, off camera, trying to keep all the German players, all the ball handlers away from that ball. Germany going with a couple of low pointers now. And one of them there, Bongard finds himself boxed in. Germany struggling a lot more with the ball this time. And that, that being a held ball changes the possession arrow. Germany keeps it, but the advantage there is that Colombia now has the possession arrow for the next. Either for the next held ball or for the start of the next quarter. So it's a good thing to win. It doesn't get you a point, but it gets you uh, the potential to win a point. Give and go at the back. They need to get the ball over the halfway line within 12 seconds. Running out of time. Just about managed it there. And Orozco cruises over. They almost need to play faultless rugby, Colombia, but they've been doing that. They've got the deficit from seven to five and then down to three now. Over the top from Bruckner. Orozco had to make a decision to go after the ball or to watch for the pass, but you know, technically we're all quote unquote quads, so your best chance of creating a turnover is to force someone to pass. very much the case the the safest way of maintaining possession is to keep the possession yourself nice work by the one to follow his pick up the court and get across half again germany struggling to get that ball in Yes, the clock doesn't start until the ball has been inbounded and then touched by a player or a chair. And they're really struggling to maintain possession. And that goes from one chair to another. It wasn't, well, it's not something you're going to see in the playbooks, but it, it worked in the end. But it's it's not quite desperation stuff from Germany. But they're, they're struggling to hang on to this lead at the moment. Oh. As long as they keep getting those kind of breaks. Oh, that one's going to be tough to grab. Not no. quite in time. You could see the referee wave that one off. And if you were watching closely, you would have seen that the ball wasn't grabbed before it went over the line there. It was incredibly close from Vargas. Almost got there in time. But you can see there that he only got control of the ball after he'd gone over the try line. A little too much heat on that pass. Yes, it needed a little bit of backspin. Easy for us to say from right. our commentary position. So it's a turnover, and that will be huge for Germany, Germany mentally. And then, well, Orozco says, I'm the one who didn't put the backspin on the pass. I'm going to get this ball back. And I'm going to get it back to a three-point game. How about that? Did it all himself. Vecker looking for the inbound. And they've got Kripke back on. So they've gone back to the well. Back to their original starting lineup of Herbst, Kripke, Wilke and Vecker. The starting lineup that served them so well and gave them a seven point advantage early on. 
Down to four points now. They also have three ball handlers on this line that are pretty good. Vargas almost lost a handle on that one as he got the first hit, but was able to maintain. And now he's being held off the court. Shouldn't he be allowed to get on? Referee's letting him play. There was a little contact there. But the ball was out of that cylinder. They talk about the cylinder from your lap up as if you put your arms in a circle. And as long as you are holding the ball in that cylinder, you can move it up and down and create contact uh, with the defender, and it will be a penalty on the defender every time. But once that ball gets out of there, if you make some incidental contact, a lot of times the referees will let you play. Looks like we got an equipment again. The last sport I commentated on was wheelchair tennis and it made me appreciate all the more how quickly the equipment changes are done in wheelchair rugby. Uh, it was, I was commentating on it late at night as well and the time they take in wheelchair tennis to pump tires back up, change wheels, you're thinking, well, it's almost like watching Formula One now. Wheelchair rugby is watching Formula One nowadays when they'll change all four wheels in three seconds and then wheelchair tennis seemed like going back to the 1960s where it, it took two, three, four, five minutes for a pit stop. So I'm very appreciative of the mechanics in wheelchair rugby. Columbia, get it over the halfway line just in time. That was close. Yeah, the, the equipment people in rugby have gotten really good. Like the standard that they expect for you to be able to change a tire is 60 seconds. And some of these tires are really hard to get on the rim. Because with the contact that the wheels take, the tires used to pop a lot. So they've made the sidewalls thicker and thicker. But it also makes that harder to get that tire over the rim. Yes, so. what we usually see is wheel changes because that's far easier to do. But yes, in wheelchair tennis, it tends to be tire changes and, and getting the tires on the rim <laughs> seems to take an, an eternity. Well, but in rugby, even though I have two spares sitting on the sidelines, of the four wheels I have, there are two that are my favorite. I want that wheel back when I get a flat. So, and that's when you're at this level, it can make a, it can make a huge difference from your second best wheel to your third. You want that thing back, so if your equipment guy can change it in 60 seconds and get it back on your chair, it, it can make a difference. It can be the difference between a, an extra try or not. Germany moving the ball around. It's gone through a lot of sets of hands, I think all four of them. Great and then patience. They built that up really well. It was swarming defense from the Colombians, but yes, Germany not losing their cool. And then route one from Orozco to Vargas. Switched it up. Made Germany think about the defense there. It's good to do that once in a while. So if the defense is, is too strong in the position and you don't make any changes, then you're not going to gain any ground. Inbound from Kripke to Vecker. has to get over the halfway line within 12 seconds does so and finds Herbst who is going to cruise over the line Emmy with quick inbound and there's Orozco waiting for it Seems like Colombia has a, a more difficult time defending this line versus the, the line we saw at the beginning of the second. Got away with one there. 
The advantage is that if Herbs can't get to it, as he couldn't there, then you've still got someone like Vilke, who is incredibly mobile for a two-pointer. Goes back to his picker to get underneath. Vivekka hadn't got the speed to get over the line himself, but with Vilke and Herbst alongside him, he had a couple of options. Orozco's going to want to score this quickly if he can, but he's got to get across half first. What a pass that is. Wow. Length of the court to Neme. Almost into the last two minutes of the first half. So that's when the time stamps are going to start to come into play. I think the springs on the axles on Vargas' chair are well-worn because they seem to pop a lot. So everyone in a very small piece of real estate here. You can see the shot clock top of your screen ticking down and then some great blocking enables Vilka to cruise through. Orozco trapped at that line. They have to look for another option. It's just three points in it. So if Columbia can get the last score. Over and back. Caught him at the line. Great defense there by Germany. So Orozco, the Colombian number four, taking the ball into the front court and then being pushed back by the Germans. So it's an over and back, and that creates a turnover. Colombia were looking to get the deficit back to three. Germany will now be keen to stretch it out to five. If they can score now and then get the last possession, that will be huge for them. Five points the difference, 67 seconds remaining. So whatever happens, Germany will get another possession. Colombia. That's right where they want to score in order to get another possession for themselves. So Colombia doing well there in terms of the timing. So they know that they will get another possession now maximum that Germany can take is 40 seconds and so maybe they'll try to score incredibly quickly here. They could also use a timeout but we'll talk about that if they do it. So wow that, that uh, wasn't a good thing for Colombia but it certainly was a great thing for Germany and now Colombia has to do the same score quickly which is why Germany have set up in the key there they are trying to make sure that Colombia take as much time as they can but no weaving through so yes Germany now 41.5 seconds remaining on the clock 40 seconds on the shot clock but yes they can take a timeout once they're well into the last 15 seconds and that will reset the shot clock to 15 the main thing is those scoring points now the pressure is coming Colombia have got the deficit down to four Orozco in there with that hand. You need to bounce the ball every He's 10 seconds loose. as well. Orozco stolen it. He needs to use some of that clock up. So he's going to use up as much of the clock as he can. He needs to make sure he scores he's got as well. Score it. Hands it off. And you can hear them counting down in Spanish. Ocho, sete. They got down to four and a half.
What happened there? Well, no. Oh, he left the court. No score. The main thing is to score. So the German player crossed the line without the ball. And because the ball wasn't advancing toward the try line, that is, it's, it's a, penalty, a penalty, so he goes try. into the box. So it's not a try, right. Oh, and Vargas dropped the pass. Oh, he's going to regret that one. I think he was thinking about what happens next. He was. He was already looking to see where his teammates were set up on defence. So Germany, now they can just hold on to the ball. They don't have to Germany bounce it. They it. will. Wow. It's the equivalent of, in the NFL, taking a knee. So at the end of the first half, Germany lead it 33-29, but we've still got a big match on our hands. Yeah, this turned out to be a great one so far.
Welcome back to the New Zealand campus for innovation and sport. It's the first day of the 2024 World Wheelchair Rugby Paralympic Qualification Tournament. It's the very first match, Germany versus Colombia. Germany taking a four-point lead into the second half. Coulda, shoulda been just three points. Colombia had a huge chance just before the break. And they've got it down to three points because they had the possession arrow. And you saw that there was uh, still a player in the penalty box. Herbst was there from crossing the try line there at the end of that last quarter. So he started the quarter, the third, in that box. Yes, one minute in the box or until your opponents score. So that was carried over. He was allowed out of the box during the halftime break. He didn't have to sit there for the 10 minutes. That would have been a bit harsh. Would have been a bit cold because it's quite chilly here, but these players certainly working up a sweat. Inbound to Orozco. He was working up a sweat in the first half. Needs to get the ball over the halfway line within 12 seconds. Bounce it every 10. Blocked in nicely by Herbst. And then the low pointers for Colombia block the German defenders and that leaves a route for Orozco to get over. Wilke got off there off of Rodriguez. Germany have gone back to their original starting lineup of Herbst, Kripke, Wilke and Wecke. Looking to toss it over. What do we got for in the key? So Rodriguez crossed that line, put, the, put himself as the fourth player inside that white area, and defensively can only have three. So he will go into the penalty box. And this will be a man advantage for Germany. It's a huge advantage in that it's a turnover. It was on the Colombian possession. So Colombia were looking to make it a two-point game and now Germany can take all the time in the world. Setting themselves up nicely. So now Rodriguez is trapped there. You can see he can't get, oh, you can't see. He can't get on the floor to help out. Uh, strategic things that you know there's a, a very specific space for you to come back on the court and it can be blocked by a player they have to let you onto the floor but when you're coming on you can't come at an angle that is greater than 45 degrees so they can trap you there when you can get a mismatch you know a 0.5 or a 1 holding a 3.5 off the court that's a huge mismatch and gives you a big advantage Yes, the only way of getting out of that is by telling the referees that you want to be the person doing the inbound. And if you're a 3.5er, then you don't want to be doing the inbound because you're taking 3.5 points off the court. And it's not going Columbia's way at the start of this third quarter. That one, well, they've got the fortune there. Lost possession, but it ended up coming off a German hand or chair last, so they get another bite of the cherry. They need to score quickly though. You can see the shot clock ticking down, five, four. Orozco, can he get over, can he get the ball away? Time runs out, you can see the frustration on Orozco's face. Shot clock there, just coming into view, top right of your screen, you can see it says 40 seconds there, so the players have one of those at either end of the court. Something for you, the viewers, to try to keep an eye on if you can, depending on how play is developing, where the ball is going. Over the top from Herbst to Wilke. Vicker doing the good blocking work. And Germany doing what they did at the start of the first half. 
which is making the most of turnovers and extending the lead. And keeping Orozco from getting close to the inbound so he can take it. Because he is clearly Columbia's number one ball handler. Vilka trapped down there. Lots of pressure. Great ball movement by the German team. You attract a lot of attention when you've got the ball in your hands, but as soon as you get rid of it, sometimes they'll let you go. And that's where you get that opportunity to get it back. Orozco trying to go coast to coast once more. And he does that. Veke did uh, kind of just let him go through there. I think he knew. So nobody called to inbound. So they, the ref, if you don't make an, a, a move to go inbound or call it, they'll just put the ball down and start the clock. You get 10 seconds to inbound. It has to touch a player on the court. And as you saw there, he set it down and blew the whistle. Timeout being called. I think that's the first forced timeout that Columbia has put on Germany, where they had to call timeout to save a turnover. I think the other two, there were other reasons. Reminder that this is a huge match in Group 1. The other two teams in Group 1, Switzerland, the Outsiders, Australia, the red-hot favorites. So winning this match doesn't quite guarantee you second place in the group, but it's not far off. But losing it puts you in a position where your chances are slim. Oh, they called that a spin. I'd like to see that one again, because that seemed like uh, he kind of was going that way on his own. So Vargas had the ball, and he it was coming toward... The chair of Vilke. You can see it from behind here. Oh, it was uh, Rodriguez that spun him. His picker got in there and turned his chair. And as you can see, it was caused him to flip over. So rather than going to the box, it's a turnover. Can't have both. Herbst with the ball, finds himself boxed in. Vilke trying to make some room for him. Kripke and Vecke it is in the end. And now it's six tries. So Germany showing a lot more defense in this quarter than they did in the last. Vargas with the try there. He'll still no doubt be regretting the missed opportunity with just three seconds to go. It would have made it a three-point game plus possession to come for Colombia. And now they find themselves five points adrift, about to be six. And it looks like Paula Martinez was in for uh, Rodriguez for Colombia. Martinez, who started the match but didn't have the best time of things, particularly struggled on the inbound. A little bit of confidence for her as she gets herself over the line. Colombia, who could have made it through directly into this qualifying tournament. It was the top team from the Parapan Games held in November in Santiago in Chile who got through directly to the Paralympics later in the year. And that was USA. They defeated Canada in the final. So that meant that Canada had to come down here. Brazil finished third. They defeated Colombia in the third and fourth place playoff, the bronze medal match. And that meant that Brazil got here directly for this qualifying tournament. And then Colombia 
managed to creep in. There are a couple of spots left, the seventh and eighth spots available for the two remaining teams that the highest in the ranking. So that ended up being Colombia and Netherlands who made it through here. Vilka takes his time. And he's drawn a technical. foul as well. He hit him across the line. Frustration showing there in the Colombians. So that's going to make this a lot harder for Colombia because they have the ball and they're shorthanded. So it's technical foul. So they have Neme in the sin bin so it's three on four but they're in possession that is a huge thing right there they, they scored shorthanded because that could easily have been a try that uh, got turned over playing three against four and now it's four on three because when it's not any score that lets you out of the bin it's when you're Opponents score, so Nemi is still there on the sidelines. And he'll be coming out any second now. Germany going to keep him there a little while longer. <laughs> Nemi back in action, but it's a six-point game once again. Looks like Herbst has an equipment problem. Those schmecking wheels. They, they clamp on more like a, a bicycle when you clamp their quick release wheels. Whereas many of the other axles are pins. Orozco did well to pick that one up. Springs. Just being patient. He knows nobody else can reach it up top there. He's waiting for an opportunity. Can't leave it in the hands of that low pointer for too long. They're just going to swarm him. Running out of time. You can see the shot clock down to six, five, and Orozco gets it over the line and gets the point. over the top and Orozco goes across the line that's just a penalty try there's no loss there although Orozco's trapped that's going to be a problem great defense from Germany there so Orozco stuck so all of a sudden the Colombians only have 5.5 available on the court or six rather since they're playing with Paula Martinez Roscoe finally manages to get out of the trap. Martinez says, right, you have the ball. She did a good job of getting out of that because they, you know, when your low pointer has the ball, somebody with lower function, you're going to swarm them and try and keep them from being able to get it out of their laps. One thing they did have there while Roscoe's trapped on the line is they had a three to two player advantage because it took two players to hold Roscoe against that line, which is, I think, why they were able to get it out. Foul. I'm guessing it's a Roscoe by the look on his face. Trying to get that ball out, be aggressive, pop it out of somebody's lap so that you can get uh, pick up one of the tries that you're down. This point five. At the Parapan Games last November, John Roscoe scored the most tries of anyone in the tournament and he committed the most fouls. He was involved all the time. So you see the clock management here. They're working it down. They want to get close to 55 seconds. Uh, teams have different numbers, but 55 is a pretty common number, which guarantees them 15 seconds at the minimum 
when that ball comes back to them. Yes, yeah, so even if Columbia take the full 40 seconds, it means that they've Germany also, will have 13.1 seconds left. You can see they've also forced Orozco to inbound by trapping him in that penalty box. So now if Orozco can score quickly enough here, they'll get another possession as well. And that is exactly what he's done. Might not have a lot of time, but they definitely have. A, as you can see next to your scores there, there's a one and a two. One is how many floor timeouts the teams have. That's uh, they can use those to stop the clock or to uh, stop the clock and to get themselves out of a turnover situation. The other two are coaches' timeouts. You can only use those on dead balls, but those could come in handy. So Germany now could. Run the game clock down inside the last 15 seconds, get it down to 12 or 13, and then call a timeout. But that would be their last floor timeout, so they wouldn't have that opportunity at the end of the game. So what they want to do is what nice Columbia couldn't do at the end of the second quarter, and that is just make sure you get the point. At the end of the day, it's only the points that count. It's not the timeouts, it's not the clock. It's the points. Yeah, so yeah. Columbia with an absolute Hail Mary opportunity here from Orozco. Nice defense there. Vilke did a great job of making it so Orozco could not get into a position to throw that pass. So great defense there, but it means that Germany have a five-point lead going into the final quarter. They lead it 46-41.
back for the fourth quarter of this opening match of the 2024 World Wheelchair Rugby Paralympic Qualification Tournament. Germany with a six-point lead, and they also had possession to start this quarter, and they're going to make it seven points already. You can hear the Germans in the crowd and on the bench encouraging them. I think they scored that on the wrong side. Yes, the scoreboard hasn't quite got up to date yet. There we go. One off Colombia and Curry. one onto Germany. And that is indeed the correct score. And it's a, a huge deficit for Colombia to turn around. They need to score on all of their possessions. And they need to get seven turnovers is the long and the short of it. That's a lot in an eight-minute period. They're going to give it their best shot. Orozco drawing the defense to one side. Works the other side. Vilken Kripke watching him around the left. Herbst in the middle, but Orozco manages to work his way through. He's very good at changing directions. The thing is for Colombia is they need to score quickly. They need to eat into this deficit as quickly as possible. So if it takes them 40 seconds to score on every possession, then that is going to make it a real struggle for them. Herbst taking his time. Again, they're going to run as much time off the clock as they possibly can, the Germans. That time a very effective using up clock. Nemu with 10 seconds to inbound. Finally does it with a give and go. Got Rodriguez up there with him. And there's a turnover. And you can see what that means to the Germans. On the bench right behind them. And they will take their time attacking. Leaving the court. So it looks like uh, Charlie Neme crossed the active try line. He probably got punched across by a German chair. So he will make this a little easier for them to waste 40 seconds. The shot clock actually restarts because he went in the penalty box, so they have 40 seconds to play with here and a man advantage. And they've set up already trapping Orozco, so it'll be difficult for him to take that inbound later on. Knocked down. Orozco got his hand in there, but Vargas not able to catch it. Real frustration there from the number four, John Orozco. He's doing absolutely everything to keep his team in this match. But they're eight points adrift with just six minutes to go. Swarming defense from Germany once again. Jens Sauerbier, the number 12, is out there at the moment. His first appearance of the tournament. Rosco trying to barge his way through and does so. But again, they're not eating into this deficit. And the clock is not their friend at the moment. Yeah, you can't trade tries when you're down by seven. Germany will be more than happy to do that. Zauerbier takes the final timeout that Germany have, the final floor timeout. So 30 seconds just to reset. It also means that they've got more time to get the ball over the halfway line, not committing a turnover. That's the main thing for them. And it takes more time off the clock as we look at John Orozco trying to carry this Columbia team on his very broad shoulders. Vilgert spins around and gets the ball over the halfway line and bounces it. It's 
So fulfilling all of his obligations. And then cruises over the line with a little help from Orozco at the end. A little nudge. Quick score for Vargas. That's what Colombia need. But the time just keeps ticking away. Every time they score, another minute's gone off the clock and there are only five left. Precarious inbound and you also can't go out of play there. That was very close from Vilke. Gets the ball away and they're going to allow play to go on because Germany were in possession and pointing towards the try line. So they are allowed to score the try. Also, it wasn't considered a spin. He hit him before the axle initially and the follow through ended up causing that flip. So if it had been a penalty, they'd have stopped it right away. Germany set up in the key and Orozco taking his time before touching the ball because the game clock doesn't restart until a player or a chair has touched the ball. Or if it goes out of play, Orozco Neme. scores quickly. Neme had uh, Kripke set up there where somebody could have hit her from the front and knocked her across the line. But I think they're thinking about getting it done as quickly as possible, like you said. Germany, the exact opposite of as quickly as possible. Wilke is going to take all the time in the world here. There's seven points clear in possession. And we're almost halfway through the fourth and final quarter. Sauer beer over to Wilke. Vargas with the try there. He turn, transitions quickly to defense. Fired away, and there was some good blocking from Zawabia. And then Vilke could pick that up and again go around the houses, take some time off the clock. Less than half of this quarter left. The final quarter of the first match. Group A action. After this match, we will have the other two teams in the group, Australia and Switzerland, battling it out. Germany, if they win this, they know that one more victory will be enough to get them through into the semi-finals, unless there is a very strange turn of events. Australia has seen some, some upsets. But not, not by any of the teams in their pool. So Vargas will take that across, trying to score quickly again. Doing their level best to keep pace here at Colombia, but time is running out on them. So yes, Germany, Colombia, Austria, Switzerland are the teams in Group A. In Group B, Canada, Brazil is the last match of the day. And then at 3.30 local time, New Zealand versus the Netherlands. Orozco got a piece of that pass too, but... The balls are bouncing Germany's way today. You can see the referee counting out with his arm, showing all the players how long, how many seconds are ticking away, how many seconds they've got left to do the inbound, and then again, how many seconds they've got to get the ball over the halfway line. And that ball was not corralled in time there by Uriel Rodriguez. Couldn't get control of it. I don't think he got control of it at all, let alone before it crossed no. the, the line. 
And those cones are technically out of bounds, so if you touch one, the referees know you crossed. Helps the Vilket. Nice wheels by Vargas, but he hit the cone. I'm surprised they didn't call that. Maybe maybe the cone isn't when you're uh, when it's about that. I just Southern Hemisphere refereeing, I think, is what it is, Dave. It's, uh, <laughs> well, I don't I don't know that it I I don't know the rule there. I have no idea. So a scramble for the ball there. Roscoe doing his Statue of Liberty. We'll see plenty of that later on when New Zealand are playing and Hayden Barton Coots right. will be doing the same. Quick score from Columbia. It's almost out of reach for them now, no, though. Into the final two minutes, Germany with a seven point lead. Orozco just not giving up. He's got his hand on that ball. I was wondering if they were going to call a held ball there. Or a jump, you know. In basketball, we would call that a jump, but there's no jumping happening on this floor. I've heard it called a jump ball. The Team GB call it a jump ball. So, uh, we do too, but yeah. I don't, that's not the official no. words the referees yeah. use. Roscoe fires it down again. And this time, Rodriguez gets there just in time. It was a great pass, uh, and it also illustrated the frustration from Roscoe. Almost punching it out there. Helps to Vilka once again. Zawabir with a good little block. Vilka's going to take his time. Orozco's going to make sure he doesn't and try to steal it off him again. If he can, if he can back away and score that try, they're not going to call a, a hell ball there. He had his hand on it. And he had, he definitely, there was no way he was going to lift that ball out. But if you can't stop the guy from scoring, they're not going to give it to you. Try to force an over and back here. Can't quite do it. It's taking time off the clock, though, and that is exactly what Germany want to do. Vargas is in trouble. You see Rodriguez there holding his chair across that line. Referee's letting fight. this one play out. Orozco manages to snatch it back. Got his elbows out there. Well, an incredible try in the end. A real scramble right in the center of the court. And the referee's... Allowing play to continue. Neither team giving up. It's not like this is over. Not in their minds. Even for Colombia, they'll be hoping for a little upset somewhere. Maybe Switzerland defeating Germany. And but Germany look to have secured the points from this one. Herbst gets the ball out there nicely. Vilka for yet another try. The Herbst Vilka combination, a very, very strong one for Germany. Sauerbier having a conversation with the referee. Looks like Orozco has. Nope, somebody has an equipment problem. It's Vargas. It's that dang axle again. 22 seconds to go. Limited options on the inbound, but Orozco's always going to be an, op an option. But look how well he's been hemmed in by the Vilka Herbst combination. It really is a heck of a pass, though, to Orozco to hit that target as a one-pointer from the sideline over the top of other people. So that's a tough pass. Playing for Pride, Orozco, and almost snatches the ball away. It's 
So now they, all they have to do is inbound. And now they'll take their time, and the clock does indeed run out, and Germany are the first team on the board in Group A. They have defeated Colombia 58-51. They opened up a seven-point lead very early in the first period, and that ended up being the difference at the end. Colombia really getting back into it, so if you take the first three or four minutes out of the equation, it was a very tight contest. And they say you don't win things in the, the first quarter, but you certainly can lose them, and I think that was the case for Colombia today. Yeah, the, the momentum really was in Germany's favor early on after the first two turnovers. And uh, when Colombia was able to collect themselves and get back into the game, Germany showed a lot of poise and a lot of patience in order to, to stay on top, never let Colombia get the lead. So they'll go back and celebrate this first victory of the tournament. Uh, this is only the first of 20 games that we'll hear, we'll see this week. And you said it was Australia. Versus Switzerland is Switzerland. next up. That'll be on at 12.30. And the winner of that will go level top of Group A alongside Germany. Switzerland and Germany. And then Colombia, Austria, uh, Aus <laughs> Australia are the matches tomorrow in this group. And then on Friday, Colombia versus Switzerland and Australia versus Germany. Marco Herbst, very happy. Disappointment for Colombia, but they have a very small squad that they've brought with them. Only used six players today, and they've only got seven to call on. Obviously, it's a long way for them to come. Germany didn't use much depth today either. While they have a couple more players, they, other than bringing sour beer at the end, Sauerbier came on. Uh, we didn't see anything of the likes of Florian Bongard. Uh, Masha Mosel, the female player, 2.5 pointer that they could use. Moritz Bruckner came on briefly as well. So they just used the six, uh, maybe keeping their powder dry for the matches that will come later on. Most notably, well, they need to make sure they need to take care of business in the local derby against Switzerland. That's first up on Thursday morning. And then 6 o'clock, the marquee matchup on Friday night. Friday night at 6 o'clock, Friday night rugby. It'll be Australia versus Germany. That will be a big match. A very big match. So that is the schedule that we have today Germany Colombia we've just seen the Germans take that one 58 51 then at 12 30 local time that will be 12 30 a.m. GMT for those of you watching around the world Australia versus Switzerland those two matches group A and then group B 3 30 New Zealand taking on the Netherlands and then Canada versus Brazil at six o'clock after that Here at the New Zealand campus of innovation and sport in Wellington, or just outside Wellington. I think the town is uh, Lower Hut. I can never remember my hotel's in Upper Hut and this one's in Lower Hut. I know there's two huts around here. So after the 32 minutes of action, we're going to go down and talk to one of the victorious players. This looks like an athlete from Germany. It uh, could be Herbst. And here we do indeed have Marco Herbst ready to Michael, talk to us. Great game by Germany today. Uh, thoughts on the game? Yeah, it was a tough game as expected. Uh, tough op opponent and um, yeah I think we we did well uh, all the tactics went well and uh, we're in the tournament now uh, what's up for the next game tomorrow yeah we'll be Swiss we'll be uh, Switzerland 
uh, will, will be not easy as well. Um, but I think we are good prepared as well, and I think we will do it. Great game today. Yeah, go well. Thank you. A great game indeed from Marco Herbst and a great game from Germany. They got themselves on the board in Group A. They are the leaders in Group A and it leaves Colombia with a heck of a lot to do. They're not out of it yet, Can but we they're going to have to have some yeah. real upsets against either Austria or Switzerland. And we were trying to talk to one of the Colombians, but uh, finding someone who can talk to us in English may be a little bit of an issue. So Germany with the points on the board, having defeated Colombia, Austria and Austria. I keep saying Austria. It's, it's the <laughs> force of habit from saying Germany, <laughs> Switzerland. Australia and Switzerland will be next up in Group A, and then after that, New Zealand, Netherlands, Canada, and Brazil in Group B. Germany, who were very close to direct qualification, they, were, they lost 53-50 uh, in their bronze medal match against Denmark at the Euros. If they'd have won that, then they would be already qualified for the Paralympics. But as it is, it's Denmark who went through from Europe along with the two finalists there, France and Great Britain. And it meant that Germany had to come through this Paralympic tournament. And it turns out that we're not going to be speaking to one of the Colombians. So we will sign off from here. Germany having defeated Colombia 58-51, and that puts them top of Group A. But of course, we have a lot of action to come, and the next match will be in just under an hour's time at 12.30 local time. Australia taking on Switzerland.